I am Anil Kumar and in this particular video I will discuss domain and range of rational functions. Now this video is meant for the students who have just started uh, this chapter on functions and so they have learned about reciprocal functions but they have not learned about rational functions yet. So for their benefit I am keeping examples simple straightforward and also with these examples I will introduce you to finding domain range of rational functions right so the approach is kind of different I hope you appreciate it so let me begin by taking an example as uh, let's say f of x equals to 1 over x plus 1 right so that is a reciprocal function so what I'll do here is I'll just add 2 to this and show you that this can be written as a rational function when I say rational function so I'm writing a function r of x as equals to some polynomial divided by another polynomial where the denominator is not equal to 0. Perfect. Reciprocal function is a special case of rational function. It is also a rational function, not denying that. Okay. But anyway, if I give you this function, you can easily write domain and range. For this function, domain is that x belongs to real numbers and x is not equal to minus 1 since that will make this denominator as 0 and you cannot divide by 0. As far as the range is concerned, this value has to be extremely extremely high to make the whole thing 0, right? So the whole thing cannot be 0. If this cannot be 0, the function cannot be 2. In fact, the horizontal asymptote is at 2. So the range y belongs to real numbers but y is not equal to 2 so that is a very simple way of getting the solution correct uh, let me take another example here uh, i'll write down 2 and in this case let me write g of x equals to another reciprocal function let's say this time we take it 2x uh, i don't want to get into fractions i mean so i'll put this as minus 6 okay and let me take this as some value. Uh, this time let's say negative, right? Negative 1. Okay, that's fine. So if I write negative 1 here, again you can write domain range for this function. You say domain is, this denominator cannot be 0. That means uh, uh, x is not equal to 3, right? 3 times 2 is 6. So you could also write this domain as uh, from minus infinity to plus 3, right? And union. Uh, from 3 to positive infinity. So everything but except uh, x equals to 3, right? So at times we say where x is not equal to 3. It makes sense. How about the range for this function? Well, the range for this function is this cannot be minus 1, right? So so we can say that it's from minus infinity to minus 1 union minus 1 to infinity. So that is the interval notation so I used both the notations for your benefit, right? So this is in the set form. So it's a set of x belongs to a set of real numbers where x is not equal to minus 1. y belongs to the set of real numbers. So these curly brackets is set of. And this line is conditioned such that y is not equal to 2. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do here is rewrite this function with common denominator. See how. I'll take common denominator of x plus 1, right? So, so when I take common denominator of x plus 1, I could write this as 1 plus 2 times x plus 1, correct? And that gives me, when I open this up, 1 plus 2x plus 2 over x plus 1, and that gives me uh, 2x plus 3 over x plus 1. Do you see that? So this function now has been written in this form where we have a polynomial 2x plus one, 3 in the numerator and x plus 1 in the denominator, right? So that is a rational function. So it's another way of writing it. If I divide numerator by denominator, I get this. 2 is the quotient, 1 is the remainder. Okay. Now let's get back to this one. We'll do the same thing here, taking common denominator of 2x minus 6 we get 1 minus 
2x minus 6 and that I could write as minus 2x right when I open the bracket and this becomes minus and minus becomes plus so let me write straight plus 7 over 2x minus 6 right so what you notice here is that uh, our range is 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 this minus 1 minus 1 so this minus 1 basically is the ratio of these two numbers minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1 here it is this number it is 1 here correct so 2 divided by 1 is is 2 so that's what we get in the range as far as domain is concerned you can straight away read now what I'm trying to say is if I write function in this form you should be in a position to write domain and range straight by taking their ratios right so let me give you my third example here uh, let's say c so write h of x as equals to 2x minus 5 over and i'm going to trick you here so i'll write 7 uh, minus uh, 3x you have to write domain range for this particular function and that becomes your test problem okay so let's write it down so i'll take some space here borrow from the other two so i'll i'll use this space here okay let me just take the space okay now for this function denominator cannot be zero so we say seven minus three x is not equal to zero so we try to solve this up right so we say well three x is not equal to seven x is not equal to seven over three right so that is for the domain part so we say domain for this function which is h of x is equal to x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to 7 over 3 perfect how about the range of h of x range is y belongs to real number where y is not equal to what so you'll see for coefficients of x coefficients of x are minus 3 and 2 do you see that so I kind of tricked you I changed the position but the ratio remains the same do you see that so it is not equal to minus 2 over 3 so if I give you a function in this form not in that form even then by finding this ratio you could always write down the range and I hope the first two examples help you to understand why is it so right so uh, I hope you understand it other concept here is that if X is very very large let me write down that also if X is very very large in that case approximately uh, these values are zero right so we land up with 2x over minus 3x and they cancel out so we have 2 over minus 3 when X approaches infinity a very large value these will be kind of zero do you understand so you approach 2 over minus 3 and that becomes your horizontal asymptote so we say horizontal asymptote is is y equals to minus 2 over 3 in this case right so we are approaching that value we are never there and therefore it is not included in our range right so I hope this concept helps you as you move along uh, so, yeah, I hope you appreciate it. Thank you and all the best.